Hi, I'm Nathan, and I'm here with Robert. How's it going? We are in the New Life Scientific Tech Shop. We got a little off track. Uh, we haven't done a video for quite a while, but we're going to show you the guts of a Sorval centrifuge today. Uh, Rob is doing some work on it, and so I'm going to let him take the floor and tell us what he wants to tell us about this thing. Well, this, uh, this is a Sorval RC5C Plus, and we're having a little bit of refrigeration issue, so we started digging into it, and we found the issue was in the uh, rotor housing. So we took it all down, peeled this off, got the rotor housing out of the, the steel collar, and sent the base plate and the collar out to get uh, sandblasted and powder coated. Make sure those are nice. How does this compare to the finish of the Sorval centrifuges normally? I would assume you probably have a, a similar coating from factory, either whether it's paint or powder coating. It just mm -hmm. depends on what they've actually used. Um, but this is getting it real close back to, you know, what it would be brand new coming out of the factory. Nice. Um, You've got this thing torn down. Oh right? yeah, this is... This is almost bare bones. If you look down on the ground here, that's the compressor there for it, and the fan, and all that. So all this is going to go back in here, along with the base plate and the housing. Um, and we're going to balance the motor and everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. And if you walk this way a little bit, we can show you the housing. So when you open the lid of the centrifuge, you're gonna open it like this. You know, you slide your lid across and uh, your motor is gonna come up through the top here and you set your rotor on top there. And we were having a refrigeration issue with these lines. They, uh, they kind of come unattached a little bit and they leak the Freon. And that's what was causing the uh, corrosion of things on the things we got re powder coated so this is all encased in foam so what we did is we cut the foam away and uh, soda blasted it down to the bare metal and we'll paint this back up and then we got some really nice closed cell foam that we're going to re-foam this uh, make sure we get the same cooling effect same or better right yep yeah. yeah. So when you open so the lid, that silver part is what you see in there, mm -hmm. and that sits inside that housing, and this is what we got repowder coated along with this base plate here. So I have to say, the powder coating that we did, I think it exceeds this. Yeah, I would assume this is probably painted uh -huh. in the factory. Uh, powder coating is much more durable. Right. So. right. Cool, Robert. Yeah. Way to go. We like seeing guts. Guts is fun. Absolutely. It's like, you know, gory, gory machinery shots. Next up is Rich, who's been obsessing over refrigeration. Uh, and we're going to see what he's doing right now. Rich, is this one buttoned up yet? Is it ready to go? Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, um, we, uh, we decided that we're going to break down and go ahead and buy the real expensive refrigerant and get this back to package spec. Yeah. Um, I got, the, got it topped off. And we're now dropping down to in close. We're like a negative 105 degrees right now. That's and cold in winter. winter. Yeah. <laughs> so is this yeah. the expensive refrigerant right here? Yeah, that's a fifteen hundred dollar bottle of refrigerant here. Fifteen hundred dollars. Um, so we were debating, you know, we had two of these units. Um, they weren't getting down the factory spec, and it was because we needed the refrigerant, mm -hmm. you know, and I decided, you know, we really want to get these things, not only the refrigerant, but the vacuum in them, mm -hmm. so the customer can get them at factory spec. You need your freeze dryer getting yeah. 100%. You don't yeah. want to ruin your samples because that's such a waste of time. So, so we're we're you're going to get a unit here, you know, that's that's producing it. Um, you can see it's a two-stage compression system. Um, the first stage is what actually cools the second stage here, and this this compressor here will get you up in your uh, cryo temperatures. So, uh, right now, like I said, I haven't looked at it, but uh, we're we're way below 100 degrees there. So this compressor is helping this one finish the job. Yeah, so okay. what happened, this compressor is actually cooling the, 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 the liquid on this one so it can take it up. It kind of slingshots this one up into the cryo temperature. So, so this one gets the good stuff. Yeah, I see. This is, that one gets the good stuff. Yeah, right there. But uh, yeah, this one here, I actually did a, a complete evacuation and recharge because this is the workhorse. Um, this one ha runs consistently, constantly. Um, this one will kick on and off. 
um, depending on this one here. But so I went ahead and you know change the oil on it, give it a complete uh, uh, evac and, and recharge on this compressor. This one here, um, like I said, it doesn't run as much, but I wanted to top it off. And so we went ahead and got the expensive stuff and got it in there. That's cool. And yeah, um, I'm curious to see kind of where I'm at now. But yeah, we're at 105. Negative, negative 105. Negative 105. Yeah. Negative 105 and still dropping. So um, great. The ambient temperature in here is about 73. So we probably, you know, without getting ambient temperature down about 70 degrees. Um, that's what we even needed to get at the factory spec because mm -hmm. uh, based on their ambient temperatures here it's uh, working harder. Yeah. Yep. So anyways, yeah, it's pretty much buttoned up. Like I said, it's, we, uh, we're happy with it. Uh, the vacuum's pulling down on the grade. It's, it's about ready to go. So I'm excited to get it out that's of my cool. area. <laughs> you probably don't see the insides of these very often, even if you have one in your lap. So yeah, this is what you got when you got cryo freezing here. You need that set up to get the extreme full temperature. Yeah, yeah. Without yeah. using liquid nitrogen. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Rich. Yeah. We're off no to go see Steve, who's working on a classic tissue processor in the back. Oh, and Rob. Rob just really wanted some camera love, so he came back for this part of the video, too. He's kind of focusing on tissue processors, but he brought in the big guns, AKA Steve, for this guy, because uh, we want it working great. Now, tell me how happy you are to be working on a triangle biosciences tissue processor. Um, tell me one thing good about this tissue processor. Uh, it, it's got a real easy name to remember. <laughs> it, is. it is very inexpensive. Yeah, it's inexpensive. Easy name to remember. This isn't our favorite brand, but they're a very affordable option, even compared to a 30-year-old Sakura 2000. They use a lot of off-the-shelf parts, which should make a nice new bill of repair. Yeah, uh, yeah. We haven't got them mastered. Uh, they're, yeah, they're, we don't do we a lot. be trying. We've had two in the you know, in the history of the company. We've had two TBS tissue products. Um, um, so what are you guys doing? Can we see the guts? Yeah, um, well right now we're running it through a, a cycle. It did have some clogs into it. Uh, certain, it, it wouldn't run through at all. Um, once we did get it running, then we had leaks. But now that we got that fixed, now we're starting, just started moments ago, the run to run through all the different steps. Um, you know, like like most of the tissue processors, it has your uh, 11, uh, 10 uh, reagents, um, three to four wax baths, wax containers. Yeah. Um, charcoal, reserve charcoal. Um, two cleaning agents, and uh, so uh, it runs through those one at a time, which is what it's attempting to do now. I see Robert poking around with the flashlight. What is, what is he looking at? Uh, he's, he's making sure we have the leaks taken care of. Yeah. So actually, this is worth seeing. This is the rotary valve, and every tissue processor like this has a rotary valve that can switch between all the different jugs. So it can, you know, Choose different junk to suck from. Reagent reservoirs. Reagent reservoirs, sorry. We don't yeah. deal with junk. Right. We deal with reagent, reagent reservoirs. reservoirs. So, man, I just, I just got told there. <laughs> we had a leak coming from the retort, so the line comes from back here and goes into the sun one here. Uh -huh. That's where we were leaking at, so took that line out, put a new hose in, and uh, put it all back together and we're just watching to make sure we're not getting any more moisture coming out of anything. Yeah. Well, this, yeah, this will be run. We're trying to hit 10 full runs on any one of the, on any of our tissue processors. You have to go through perfect. Um, yeah. No problems, no drips, no, no alarms, just perfect. So 10 runs. 10 runs. Well, that's awesome. So we're not just running this thing once and hoping we got lucky and sending it out. We're, we're putting it through the test, make sure it's gonna come out clean. Mm -hmm. Where it has just the one heater, it's both its simplified machine, so it's gonna have less problems to break down. Right, you don't have another heater to break. You don't have another heater to break. 
but there's also it's cheaper to make if, as, as again probably more to, to, to make that price point. Well, if there's not that heater, then that means you have to let it sit for a while longer than other systems where you can use it, right? Uh, yes. Uh, although uh, initially you're looking at 10, 12 hours for your wax to uh, to break down. Many, uh, uh, many of the other brand that you would know, like at Scarf, their default is 12 to 13 hours when you first load them to get some nice it, smooth wax, right? Yeah, before it will let you go on, you have to tell it that. So why not just like microwave your wax and then dump in molten wax? Well, we have the, well, they do have the devices for that. Or we have machines that will actually microwave. Right, milestones. So the milestones, if they really want, I like the idea of microwaves, we can, we can take care of it. I just invented a new machine. See? Yeah. But it's already been invented, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, it, it's, yeah, the, the uh, handling a hot molten wax is not my thing that I would like to do. It has disadvantages, yeah, yeah that's disadvantage. true. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for uh, the tour of the insides of a TBS. You probably will never see one of these again in any of our videos, except for that one over there. So, yeah. okay, I'm maybe. Near you, yeah, that's the uh, twin brother of this guy. So, that's it for today. That is New Life Scientist Tech Shop Walkthrough. It's been a while. Thanks for joining us.